Actually, I just got a message from one, one of our uh, Al Jazeera uh, adamant uh, viewer, apparently, uh, saying uh, those in Tahrir Square got what they wanted, but do they want what they will get? I think it is too early to celebrate. Uh, it depends what happens in the next few hours, next few days, next few months. Certainly it is, I want to say, assuring between quotes, it is assuring that uh, everyone agrees there have to be early elections at the earliest possible date. So at least we know that this is not going to be an overextended, military-supported uh, coup d'etat. On the other hand, we need to know what truly and effectively the Muslim Brotherhood is about to do next. Because the idea of alienating a quarter percent, perhaps more, of their supporters of the, uh, I mean, 25 percent or a quarter of the Egyptian people from the next political process, that's going to be a major flop for any new political process, considering that these people did win election the last time around, and that wasn't too long ago. Having said that, I've, di I've done, I've did some quick readings of, of, uh, of what some would call democratic coup d'etats. Democratic coup d'etat, and, and some people would actually say that the 2011 revolution is a democratic uh, coup d'etat because the military and the people ousted President Mubarak. Which and is it, what's happening here right now. Well, except that Mubarak was not an elected president, he was a dictator. Ah. And what we have now is actually an elected president. Will this process, this roadmap, according to Dal Baradei, according to the young fellow from Tamarod, lead to even more robust and more democratic process than what we've seen before, of course, remains to be seen. This could be only be wishful thinking if the Muslim Brotherhood decided to boycott the whole thing and, and, and take, on to, take the streets for, for more violent protests. So, so not, it's not always that military coup d'etats are necessarily a bad thing, but in this case, it is a coup d'etat against an elected leader. Now, and tell us uh, more about this uh, roadmap that they've presented. How optimistic are you that it will move Egypt forward? Amazingly, it's, it resembles very much to what President Morsi said in his speech yesterday that he agrees to, but that the streets does not agree to. With one exception, that he will no longer be the foretaker or the, or the, or the guardian of this transitional process. The process, to summarize it in four words or four lines, is one, uh, that there will be the chief justice as the new interim president. Two, that there will be a new transitional government. Three, that there will be constitutional amendments leading to new early elections with a new election law. Uh, now, this is all sounds good on paper. Uh, this all sounds good and could have maybe could have been all reached with the president. Has this been all precipitated? Has this all been rushed by the military and by the opposition who would like to inherit the power of the Muslim Brotherhood and the president? Again, I am not here to judge or analyze anyone's intentions. But clearly, what we see today is a removal of a president not through legal means, not through institutional means, not through the ballot box, but through the force of the military forces with the support of the opposition parties. Okay, Mawan. Thank you again, Mohamed Bashar, our senior political analyst.